this is the map that I handed in for my first uni assignment. What do you think? I'll let you know what mark I get later on, but let's go through a bit of it. The task was to choose anywhere in Australia and to make a map of it, to put down things that you know about the area and to kind of like sell what's going on. Maybe include some little things about your life. Like I came up here to surf with my family every summer. I get lessons and now I can surf at Froggies. This is on the Queensland, New South Wales border and it is a very tourist place. I did a little legend here, beach showers, swell, rocks, steps, point of interest, border, and I tried to make it as localized as possible. So what mark do you think that I got this from uni? I do recall when handing this in and seeing the looks on my classmates' faces that they kind of gave me uh, a look alike. You have autism. There's something wrong with you. Because what they handed in was like done in SketchUp and Adobe Illustrator. And I felt so embarrassed. Oh, this just looked like a year seven. Year. I like maps. Wait. I love maps, and I love cities, all types of cities. I also love 21 Pilots, and I love language. And my favourite language band from overseas is Undergrun. Sorry, let me just not even do a Norwegian accent. Underground. So this is what a uni class looks like using Morrow boards. You have classes online, you have all your work online, but you also have some in-person classes on campus. This is mine here, where we had to fill out information about green infrastructure, transport and mobility, bulk infrastructure on certain case cities, and we had to include lots of maps. We didn't make the maps, we just had to find them, and then your teacher comes along with a little circle there and leaves feedback. Now back to that map that you saw at the start. Yep, this one here, the first assignment I ever had at university and the first map that I had to draw that was going to receive a mark. This was the actual assignment and the tutorial that we had with the information. It was about introducing hand drawing principles of line weights and symbiology into plan views, where we would share them online and show everyone and do a presentation. It was all about how to communicate spatial information, all about diagrams and common hand drawing techniques and tools for 2D diagrams. So you can kind of see now why I drew mine the way that I did, whereas others did it on Adobe Illustrator using their pens. Like if I could have known that I could have used like an Apple pen to do the assignment, then I would have loved it. But there were other people that also did hand draw mats, but they were more like this one. They were absolutely fantastic. Mine was just so embarrassing. I so this is what they were sort of looking for, hand-drawn spatial maps. Maps that extrapolated a real place into a conceptual representation, like from the left one here to the right one here. And this was a very simple one that I looked at and go, yeah, I actually kind of like that. You know where everything actually is. So that's what we call a mental map in city planning. And then they kind of develop here into simple examples. So this is my mark for the map. I got 93.5 out of 100. I was blown away. I had no clue. I was expecting to pass. And if you look here, I actually got close to one of the highest marks across the benchmark. Now I love this about university, that they actually show you the marks almost of everyone else. Now here is what the teacher actually said. They said, great diagrams and fun sketches. I instantly know exactly where this place is, just like from looking at these maps. I think your illustration of the beach life is great and I love the characters. I would only ask that you similarly bring to life the urban elements a bit more. Perhaps you give more colour to the high street, the shop areas and amp up the greening along the main street. The second diagram is also an interesting abstraction and I like it on its own as a diagram, but I lost the vibe place that first illustrates so well in your first map. But all in all, very good job. 
I uploaded these maps and I was so nervous. I did not know what anyone was going to think about them. I almost had massive anxiety and panic attacks before I even put them up. And I was talking to another creator friend of mine and she gave me the confidence to put them up and say, it will be all right. So I put them up and I'm so thankful for that I did because it has got me back into mapping. So I found a quiet little place to do mapping again. And I went out and bought a new book and I had a panic attack because I didn't realize that I actually hate the texture of this paper. It's very glossy and shiny and I couldn't cope with just the feeling of it on my skin, even though I often wear gloves when I do any form of drawing or writing. It was just horrible, like someone was just like jabbing pens into my hand at the same time. So I had to go out and get a new one. So there was kind of a setback there. And then these pens, this is just hell dumb that I can be, just how not in tune with social situation. These pens cost $70. I just like, I was gobsmacked. I just paid them out of embarrassment because I was too, uh, I didn't want to feel bad because the lady spent like 10 minutes talking, me, talking to me about the pens and how good they are. And she was a local business and it was a small business. And I just went to the cash register and just paid them. So I've got the new setup here to record tutorials for you with a little hanging camera there and hopefully a tripod as we start filming and making a new map of Phoenix Ridge, half Norwegian, half Australian. Wait, that's not even half. I meant a quarter Norwegian, a quarter Australian, car-centric USA. Can't have a city without lots and lots of USA parking lots. Although I'm going to have to try and make it nature beauty with Bunnings. So here is the second assignment that I had to do where I had to learn how to effectively tell a story of place through an urban design lens, through spatial analysis, which considers qualitative and quantitative aspects of place. You will showcase how to utilize various graphic techniques and principles to develop a series of placed based outputs or maps that will be used to weave together a rich graphic history of the place you have chosen you will be using Adobe Illustrator. This was the first time that I had ever used Adobe Illustrator. I actually had to sign up for an Adobe account. I didn't even have one. And this is what I handed in as part one, using Adobe Illustrator to take part of Google Maps, do the outlines, get rid of the shade and do the legend. So I was quite impressed and quite happy with this map for my first time ever using Adobe Illustrator. Then this was part two of that assignment where we had to make a cross section of the main street in the area. And this was done using Adobe Illustrator as well. And I had a lot of fun doing this, especially getting the, the graphics here. I think I got them from SketchUp and then putting them on. So the grade that I got for this was 87 out of 100. The third assignment that I had to do was using SketchUp, which is quite a challenging program. And I spent hours and hours over days and days just getting my head around how to even use the UI and the tools in it. So this was what he showed us, what my assignment should have looked like. This is obviously from a previous student and these look absolutely amazing. So here is what I handed in. This is the Google map image or the Google Earth image. Here is my first attempt at it in SketchUp. Not too bad, I was pretty happy with that. A closer up view of it in the afternoon, which is an isometric view and you can see the shadows forming. Then I needed to do a colored view showing one of the buildings that I was highlighting being this one here in orange and the blue here being the street that I was going to develop. This is a closer up image. And so what mark did I get? I got 88.25 out of 100. At this point, I thought I was going so well. You couldn't wipe the smile off my face that I was so proud of myself. These are some of the comments that actually made my day. Didn't they, Thor? Fellow Aussie with autism here. I absolutely love this. And I also drew many maps, floor plans, and ancient civilization layouts. It's so heartwarming to see someone else out there with very similar interests as me. So the next assignment was making a minimum of three maps summarizing human behavior and key findings within the place that you choose. 
And here is my assignment, the paths of people. And as you can see here, I even included little graphics of people, which I thought were kind of cute. And the high pedestrian path area here, I was very happy with this. And I cannot believe I included a poo emoji on a university assignment. What was I thinking? This one here is the transit zone where 90% of stay locations are north of this zone, meaning this is where people all hang out. But my mark on it was 79.25, my lowest mark yet. And I was scratching my head as to why. And I couldn't wait to sneak in into the feedback and find out why my teacher didn't like them as much as my other assignments. What had I missed? What did I do wrong? Was it the poo emoji? So here is what the teacher said. Thanks mate, your submission meets the brief. Oh great. A bit disappointed you used a Google map base to diagram on top of as I would have liked you to use your own. I do like your composite summary diagram and your symbols used. So yes, he liked the poo emoji. Your spot analysis is also good but your narrative too long. The task was limited to only 100 words and I did way too many. So 101 in uni, keep to the word count. The fifth assignment I was shocked by, storytelling skills for urban designers. Did we really have to tell stories? Because I love telling stories and it was all about developing and creating a 12 to 15 page narrative story of your neighborhood and its key place, guided by a hundred word narration developed. So this was great and I also get to use Adobe InDesign, which I had heard was fantastic and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Let's have a look at it. So I made this using Adobe InDesign of a very touristy place. I loved putting all the pictures in in high quality and surfs up bra, including lots of maps and demographics of the area. And we got to put in all the things that we had done in the previous units here, sort of as like a bit of a portfolio. So this was my favorite assignment so far. And then I had to tell a story about the area. I was hoping to get back to my 80s, maybe even a 90 would have been really, really good. So let's go over now and have a look and see what mark that I got for this assignment. So it seems all my hard work had paid off. I received a 94 out of 100, almost getting the highest mark. Some other student trumped me by 0.5. Awesome job. Someone sadly got a zero again. So now we're in the big leagues, we needed to make a design proposal on that Ward Street, that little street in blue that was on that map. What things would I put into that place to make it better? So this is just like one of those things you get from a council, those brochures that show you what's going to occur in the area. So I did the history of the area and a bit of a rationale about what I planned on doing. I used some SketchUp pictures in here to talk about what the current situation is going on that there are parking challenges there's not enough shade and seating and there is too many high-rises and local businesses and then I had to look at the guiding principles within the council what were the laws of that area and the codes and then I gave some statistics on the area of the population the amount of apartments the household composition and then I had to come up with a map using Adobe Illustrator to put in new things into that area and then find pictures that kind of match it. So I came up with 19 different things that would go into that little pedestrian walkway, closing it off from cars. And then I had to draw it in SketchUp. So this is the map here that I drew with a little playground and splash park, more seating for the cafeteria and some trees. And then this is a closer up picture of it followed by a SWOT analysis of its strengths, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities of the plan. What attractions could come to there? Maybe you could film. We had to look at the connectivity of how the walkway functioned. What were the impacts to what I was planning on doing? And of course, sustainability. What WSD systems will be put into place? So what mark did I get? 89.6 out of 100. I was pretty happy with that. Absolutely stoked considering first uni subject. Tomorrow I'm going to take this map book and get them all printed out to A3 and then every single one of them is going to be put onto this wall stitched together so we can have a look at the giant city. I can't wait, I'm just dying. Oh, it's just going to be so awesome just like starting up there will be the first suburb and then we'll come all the way down. I know you're just looking at a wall and we will see the entire 112 maps 
on one giant wall. I can't wait. So that's my first uni subject done. I'm ready and raring to get back into my second one. I cannot wait and I hope there's so much more mapping to be done. Yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way. I can see the way you look at me. I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby have a taste All the highs and the lows No, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side baby. Oh, and maybe one day I will show you What's in all of these Every page filled With something that you'll probably never guess Make sure you hit subscribe and follow along so you can join me in my next university subject and see what marks I get. This way you can kind of get an idea of what an urban planning, city planning degree is like, albeit from Australia, but I heard they're kind of similar around the world.